Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I have the pleasure to talk to you about the adrenal glands. That's right, the adrenal glands are part of many endocrine glands that we have in the human body. And the adrenal glands, as you can see in this picture right here, which is difficult, are covered with adipose tissue. And this big sort of whitish structure right here is your kidney, right? And so what's fascinating about that is that a lot of our internal organs are surrounded by adipose tissue and the adrenal glands is one of them. And so one of the things I wanna say right out of the gate about the adrenal glands is that they produce uh, two of some of the most important hormones uh, in the entire body. And I think most people are, are perhaps familiar with it. One of them is adrenaline, which is produced obviously from the adrenal glands. And another one is called cortisol. And both those hormones, and we'll look into this into detail in a moment, help the body respond to stress. And so that's what this gland is all about, responding to stress. But in fact, it does some other interesting things too. It has some other hormones that help to regulate sodium and potassium, and they also are capable of producing some, um, some gender hormones as well, such as uh, testosterone. And so let's jump into this conversation with these adrenal glands. So. One of the things that I think I, I find kind of curious about the adrenal glands, this is a picture of normal adrenal glands. They kind of are pyramid shaped. And if you look at the diameter here with this sort of this little ruler here, and these are centimeters, they're very tiny. They're about three to four centimeters in diameter. And so they're kind of small. And then what it should be noted is that they're very light as well. So they're kind of these little light airy structures, like little caps that sit on top of the kidneys. And one of the things about the adrenal glands that are kind of interesting is that they're, they're almost like two glands in one. They're this outer gland called the cortex, so the adrenal cortex, and then this inner area, which is shown here in red, which is the adrenal medulla. Now the word medulla and cortex are not restrictive to just the adrenal glands, but they're an anatomical reference to the outer and the inner. So the outer layer is the adrenal cortex and the inner layer is the medulla. And each of those regions produce distinctive hormones. And so that's why it's appropriate to discuss that kind of anatomy. So as I was mentioning, the adrenal glands are sort of sit on top like little, little beanie caps to the kidneys. So they're adjacent to the kidneys. And then there's an outer portion, which is the cortex and the inner portion is the medulla. But both the hormones of the cortex and the medulla help the body manage stress and respond to some stresses. And so um, let's get in a little bit more into the anatomy. So the cortex, as it turns out, makes up the majority. So it's really uh, definitive in terms of it's like dominating in terms of the structure of what the adrenal gland actually is. And so it's so much so that um, scientists like to sort of take it apart and look at just the adrenal cortex and create little zones. So there's three distinctive zones that you could see here. And I say distinctive zones because this is a diagram and it's easier to see. Like the zona uh, glomerulosa, for example, it's easy to see that that's different from some of these lower ones. And here's the medulla down below. But watch this. If I show you an actual slide, this is going from the outside in. So this is just the cortex. You might recognize this as being the adipose tissue, which is found in the beginning of this video on the outside of the adrenal gland. Ah, it's not as easy to see these, these zones, but I, I put the picture over here on the side so you can see this is a side profile. So you can see here's the, the middle layer and here's the inner layer right in here, the, the three zonas right here of the cortex. And so if you're ever are studying this in more detail, um, that becomes important. But in general, this is what we're talking about. So the adrenal cortex is out here. So there's the cortex hormones and the medulla medulla hormones and here's the adipose tissue on the outside so it's kind of like a pyramid so let's start from the inside and work our way out see these these red and blue structures are blood vessels of course there's lots of blood vessels coming in and out of this gland because a gland remember is a group of cells that are specialized for secreting and if this is an endocrine gland those hormones then need to travel into the bloodstream and go to all different places in the body so it's appropriate that it's highly vascular vascularized. And so the adrenal medulla produces one of the most, inside the medulla, produces one of the most famous hormones of all, right in here, the medulla, and that is adrenaline. But 
Adrenaline can also be called epinephrine. So epinephrine or nor epinephrine. These are two somewhat similar hormones that behave uh, the same. So epinephrine, maybe some of you are familiar with the fact that sometimes uh, people carry around an EpiPen. So Epi is short for epinephrine. And so uh, you're like, oh, maybe that's where you've heard that before. So what epinephrine is attempting to do is uh, it's regulated by the nervous system, meaning like there's some kind of trauma that we're facing and we're, that we're scared or we're in a fire or in a car accident and we need to respond to that kind of stress. So this is an intense stress that we're under. And so the body is releasing epinephrine. And so the, like, for example, this guy is trying to like get out of this fiery uh, structure right here. And so epinephrine or adrenaline is produced. And what this does in order to respond to a stress, well, one of the things that we'd want is lots of blood glucose. If we have a lot of blood glucose going through, then we're able to respond a little bit better to stress. And so the epinephrine helps to raise blood glucose levels. And it also helps to raise fatty acid levels, which can then be used as a source of energy as well by our muscle cells. So it increases metabolic activities. Anyone uh, who's been in a stressful situation understands this. Your heart rate is increasing rapidly. So it causes heart rate to increase, which is then increasing circulation, which is then delivering the glucose and the oxygen to all the, all the muscles of the body in order to react to the stress. And so in order to get the best ventilation um, in your lungs, the smallest air passages are called bronchioles. And each of these bronchioles then branch off and terminate into these air sacs called alveoli. And then this is where the air, oxygen in particular, diffuses into the blood oxygenating it. But do you notice here there's some smooth muscle that surrounds these smaller air passages called bronchioles? Uh, epinephrine targets those smooth muscles, causes them to relax, and therefore dilates uh, bronchioles, which increases ventilation, which increases um, oxygen and glucose, which is going to give us energy. And so you may have noticed this, that sometimes if you're in the middle of a, a very frightening, scary situation or stressful moment, you might turn pale. And so the, this is the body's attempt to sort of uh, shunt uh, blood away from unnecessary areas, like for example, the skin. So blood vessels will uh, constrict in the skin, giving you a, a pale appearance. It'll also constrict blood vessels to the digestive organs because it's not the moment to be <laughs> digesting food, but rather what this does is that it increases blood flow. If you cut off those extraneous areas, it increases blood flow to the heart where you really need it, the brain and the skeletal muscles. And so all of this increased metabolic rate is simply referred to, and you've probably heard of this before, it's your fight or flight response, and that's caused by epinephrine or adrenaline. And so what does that even mean, fight or flight? That means that if you're in a stressful situation, it's going to give you the power to fight off the, the the situation or simply to get out of the situation in other words run or to battle and so this is what's uh, what the, what those hormones are all about and so these are reduced released from the medulla in response to the nervous system uh, responding to some kind of outside uh, situation so what I want to mention is that we're talking about this middle area this blue area called the the uh, adrenal medulla so it's epinephrine or norepinephrine, which is sometimes called adrenaline. I'm going to now direct our attention to the adrenal cortex. Those produce some different hormones. And so they could be classified uh, by three main categories. Uh, one category is glucocorticoid. I know that that sounds like um, kind of complicated, glucocorticoid. And an example of that hormone is called cortisol. And, and as the name may imply, it affects your glucose. And so glucose metabolism is affected, again, a stress hormone. So it's going to help to metabolize sugar for energy and to raise the level of glucose in the body so that you have lots of energy. So cortisol and epinephrine work uh, to solve stressful problems. Then, however, the cortex, also this big area, produces Mineralocorticoids. Mineralocorticoids affect 
the levels of minerals in your bloodstream, principally sodium and potassium, are influenced by this. And an example of that hormone is aldosterone, which is also produced by the, the cortex. And then you have some gender hormones, some sex hormones, like for example, testosterone is produced by the adrenal cortex. So let's look at that. So you're like, wow, so many hormones. The truth is, if you want that, there's, there's about 30 different steroids that are produced by the adrenal cortex. So it's really, really active, really busy. But I'm just gonna highlight these three because I think they're, they're kind of critical. There's the aldosterone, which again, regulates mineral levels and cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and then there's these sex hormones. And so this is what aldosterone looks like biochemically. I always think it's important to look at the biochemistry of, of, of what hormones and other molecules are, just to give you a sense of it. There's no need to be afraid of it. It's clearly a, a, a steroid, as you can see, this basic carbon structure right here. And so this helps to influence sodium and potassium levels. So thus, it's called a mineralocorticoid. And, and how does it regulate? Uh, these things, well, it causes the kidney primarily to conserve sodium ions. The kidney is sort of capable though, uh, of regulating this. In other words, if there's excess, it could excrete it, and if, it, if there's less, it can conserve it. It can reabsorb it back into the blood. And so if you're conserving sodium, you're also conserving water uh, because uh, water is always attracted to sodium. So this is going to um, and then affect blood volume as well. And so also increasing blood pressure as a result of this. And so this is all related, increased blood pressure um, to sodium levels. And it also can excrete potassium ions. And to a lesser degree, um, this hormone can regulate other ways in which we could uh, conserve sodium and, and, uh, and, uh, and excrete potassium, which is in salivary glands, and also sweat glands are influenced by aldosterone, come to think of it. But the kidney is the primary source because it's the kidney that can really regulate whether or not it's conserving something or not, whereas um, salivary glands and, and uh, sweat just kind of happen. So aldosterone uh, uh, is a response to decreasing blood volume. I mentioned this. It helps to uh, increase blood pressure as a result of conserving sodium ions. So that's important. So cortisol, again, a stress hormone, uh, responds to stress, but a little bit low level stress. If you were to characterize high level stress would be adrenaline, uh, low level stress would be cortisol. And because it's a glucocorticoid, it influences the metabolism of glucose. And, and also protein and fatty acids, okay? So what it does is it slows down in the cell uh, the production of proteins, it slows down the productions of some amino acid pathways, and it also increases the production of glucose. And it also it speeds up pathways, metabolic pathways, that break down fatty acids into energy packets, these two carbon structures that go into the mitochondria. All of this is so that you have a greater amount of energy in the bloodstream. And this is a picture right here of cortisol. It's also a steroid. And so how is cortisol regulated? Well, let's talk about this because it's a great example of negative feedback, cortisol. So who's producing cortisol? Here's a rhetorical question. You're like, well, you just said the adrenal cortex is producing cortisol. That's right. But guess what? The adrenal cortex only produces cortisol when it's told to by the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland produces adrenal corticotropin hormone, the pituitary gland does. But the pituitary gland in the brain doesn't make ACTH unless the hypothalamus produces cortisol releasing hormone. So this is kind of interesting. And so this diagram I think helps to explain what's happening. So say you want cortisol to be produced right here by the adrenal cortex. So let's start up here in the brain. This is in the brain. So the brain in particular, the hypothalamus is producing cortisol-releasing hormone, so it's a green plus. That's traveling here, let me animate that, that's traveling here to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. That produces adrenal corticotropin hormone, which means it's going to the adrenal cortex via the bloodstream. So lots of capillaries, this is kind of vague with this big bloodstream here, but anyway. 
ACTH travels in the blood and it goes to the cortex and it says, hey, cortex, start making a lot, start making a lot of cortisol. Da, 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 da. So cortisol, and, you know, what's it doing? Well, it's inhibiting protein synthesis, as I said. It's, it's promoting the conversion of fatty acids to energy and it's also stimulating glucose production. All of that is helping us fight off stress. Okay, so check this out though. When the levels of cortisol get too high, the concentration of it gets too high, then that's going to inhibit uh, the pituitary gland from producing adrenal corticotropin hormone, and it's also going to inhibit, both of those are inhibitory, uh, the hypothalamus from producing cortisol-releasing hormone. So it's kind of cool, it's negative feedback. So in other words, when cortisol is low, it's, it stimulates its production. When it's high, it shuts it off. So it's regulated by negative feedback. And so I think this diagram is kind of useful too because stress is coming in from the outside. And so the nervous system is responding to this. So neurons in the brain are connected to the spinal cord, which is then nerve impulses are going to the medulla. And they're saying, hey, medulla, we need epinephrine. And so the epinephrine comes raging out of our body. Heart rate gets go, goes like this. And then again, uh, cortisol releasing hormone and then adrenal corticotropin hormone comes these so this is endocrine response as well and then causing the cortex to produce uh, cortisol and so finally uh, these sex hormones that I was mentioning are, are kind of important because I don't know if you realize that if you're female watching this video you have testosterone uh, in your body and what's interesting about that is you might be thinking well I don't have any testes I thought the testes produce testosterone they do but the adrenal cortex also does this too. So um, we can produce, uh, males can produce female hormones and females can produce male hormones and all of this is happening in the adrenal cortex, okay? And so those are rather important in terms of the stimulation of development of, other, of your reproductive gonads uh, during fetal development. More of that conversation later when we talk about the reproductive system. But it's certainly worth noting that the adrenal cortex produces reproductive hormones, as well as uh, cortisol and uh, epinephrine. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are sometimes uh, forgotten. Uh, they don't get the glamour <laughs> that other, uh, if there is such a hierarchy in terms of popularity of glands. I, in, in my opinion, I think they're sometimes forgotten. But really important hormones like epinephrine and um, cortisol, as well as all the others that we talked about. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the adrenal glands. Thanks for watching.